Hey everyone, Yan Zhao back again. We're gonna be looking at Matt Mercer's Explorer's Guide to Wild Mount. Now, I know it's been out a little bit, but we're gonna take a look and we're gonna split it up into a few different parts. I think, first of all, we'll start off with his subclasses. Now, Matt has made his own, well, subclasses, obviously, sort of new um, magical sub genres. So we have transmutation, necromancy, evocation, that sort of thing. And we are going to get um, Dunamancy. So let's take a look at what he has. Uh, we have the Echo Knight uh, Chronergy <laughs> Magic Wizard and Graviturgy magic for the wizard so let's see what he's talking about dunamis and dunamancy dunamis is the primal magical energy of potential and actuality and anticipatory arcane force that helps shape the multiverse and might very well be what holds the element together like an infinite web of unseen tethers kind of sounds like the weave but okay so Dunamency is an ancient esoteric study of magic almost unknown across Exandria. Facets of Dunamency have quietly bled into more common applications of spellcraft, like an unrealized glimpse behind the curtain of creation. Mages who pursue the study of the strange and complex forces call themselves Dunamancers, and their interest in learning uh, to alter the fabric of gravity, potential, and time often coincide with a hunger to understand the oldest mysteries of the cosmos. So one of the things that uh, Matt Mercer was talking about this, um, other spells having a glimpse behind. So for example, the uh, haste and slow spells would be part of this overarching school of uh, chronomancy. But in but you could consider them like you only see parts of the whole you can't you only got a couple pieces of the puzzle not the whole thing and that's how he fits his subclasses into the greater D, &D whole so dunamis as a martial focus life is an extension is an extended series of choices every crossroad offers path to different possibilities yada, yada yada once the choice is made one path sparks to life and continues while other fade their energy of potentiality diffusing into the multiverse so a few rare characters learn to invoke and harness this release dunamis in the throes of battle to enhance their martial capabilities so we have the fighter. There are many, and this is the Echo Knight, a mysterious and feared frontline warrior of the Kryn dynasty. The Echo Knight has mastered the art of using Dunamis to summon the fading shades of unrealized timelines to aid them in battle. Surrounded by echoes of their own might, they charge into the fray, a cycling swarm of shadow and strikes. Okay, so at third level, you get Manifest Echo. You can use a bonus action to magically manifest an echo of yourself into an unoccupied space you can see within 15 feet of you. This echo is magical translucent gray image of you that lasts until it is destroyed. You dismiss it as a bonus action or until you manifest another echo or you're incapacitated. Your echo has AC 14 plus your proficiency bonus one hit point and immunity to all conditions it has to make a saving throw it uses your saving throw bonus it is the same size as you and occupies its space on your turn you can mentally command the echo to move up to 30 feet in any direction and if it is ever more than 30 feet of you it is destroyed at the end of your turn and you can use it in the following ways as a bonus action you can teleport magically swapping places with your echo at a cost of 15 feet of your movement regardless of the distance between you well it's got to be more or less well no it actually could be more than 30 feet of you because it's not destroyed until the end of its turn so assuming its movement is 30 feet it could theoretically 
move 30 feet, be 60 feet away, and then you could swap. When you take the attack action on your turn, any attack you make with that action can originate from your space or the echo space. You can make this choice for each attack. So that's very cool. You could Your guy could really be more of a backliner in uh, caster range and still make an attack. When a creature that you can see within five feet of your echoes moves at least five feet away from it, you can use your reaction for an attack of opportunity. All right, also level three, Unleashed Incarnation. You can heighten your echo's fury whenever you take the attack action. You can make one additional melee attack from your, the echo's position. You can use this feature a number of times equal to your constitution modifier. You regain all expended uses when you finish a long rest. So this is very cool and it seems, you know, the higher up in levels that you go, you can really crank out a lot of extra damage. It's especially nice at a third level when you, you don't have that second attack in general. So this would be somewhat equivalent of the sort of like the monk's extra attack, extra unarmed attack for the bonus, for bonus action, excuse me. All right, Echo Avatar, seventh level Echo Knight feature. You can temporarily transfer your consciousness to your Echo. As an action, you can see through your Echo's eyes and hear through its ears. During this time, you are deafened and blind. Slightly unclear. So your original body is deafened and blind. You can sustain this effort, this effect up to 10 minutes, and it can end any time. Requires no action. While your echo is being used in this way, it can be up to a thousand feet away from you while without being destroyed. So that's, you know, quite a nice feature. It would kind of suck if it was still limited to 30 feet. Up to a thousand feet, man, you could really, really have them out there. All right, Shadow Martyr. 10th level. You can make your echo throw itself in front of an attack directed at another creature that you can see. Before the attack roll is made, you can use your reaction to teleport the echo to an unoccupied space within five feet of the target creature. The attack roll that triggered the reaction is instead made against your echo. That's handy. Once you use this feature, uh, can't use it again, long or short rest. So this is uh, also quite nice. One of the sort of down spots, I guess you'd say, of 5e vanilla is that there isn't a whole lot of, not a whole lot of classes get the action to actually protect another class during um, either they're during their turn or during an enemy's turn. So this is nice if you want your knight to be more of a tank, more of a protector as opposed to straight up DPS. All right, reclaim potential, 15th level Echo Knight feature. You've learned to absorb the fleeting magic of your echo. When an echo of yours is destroyed by taking damage, you can gain a number of temporary hit points equal to 2d6 plus your con mod provided you don't already have temporary hit points you can use this feature a number of time equal to your con mod so that's definitely a nice way to keep getting the um, temporary hit points back especially since it's only a bonus action to summon one level 18 legion of one you can use a bonus action to create two echoes with your manifest echo feature and these echoes can coexist if you try to create a third echo the previous two are destroyed anything you can do from one echo's position can be done from another's instead when you roll initiative and have no uses of your unleashed incarnation left you regain one use of that feature it's uh, a halfway decent feature you know the only downside again is most campaigns don't make it to level 18 so i'm not really sure how useful it would be it's something that i don't know somebody's got to make it to 18. So overall i think the echo knight has a lot of nice flavor to it only big 
problem with it I can see is from a DM's point of view, having, you know, more things to move and a little more this and a little more that, it's going to bog down combat more. So if you have a large party and they all have like familiars or you got some rangers with some with combat animals and whatnot, it's really gonna bog things down. So I don't know. It's it's gonna be up to the DM to figure out a way to streamline combat a little bit more. All right, let's go on to the wizards. The brightest minds of Wildmont often find themselves gravitating to the ancient and dangerous studies of magic. Some train for decades, while others learn their craft in the shadows, keeping the discovery to themselves. So at the second level, they gain the arcane class feature, chron chronergy magic and graviturgy magic. So chronergy, oh man. Cron, oh, chronogy, magic. Focus on manipulation of time. Those who follow that tradition, they learn to make the pace of reality to their liking. All right, so level two, you magically exert limited control over the flow of time around a creature. As a result, after you or a creature you can see within 30 feet, make an attack roll ability or check you can force the creature to re-roll you make this decision after you see whether the roll succeeds or fails the target must use the result of the second roll you can use this ability twice and you regain expended uses when you finish a long rest temporal awareness also second level you add your intelligence mod to your initiative rolls now that is darn nice uh one thing that really sucks playing a wizard is generally your dex is not going to be that great it's, it's almost a dump stat so adding intelligence modifier can really help a lot all right level six momentary stasis as an action you can magically force a large or smaller creature you can see within 60 feet of you to make a con save against your spell dc if the creature fails it's encased in a field of magical energy until the end of your next turn or until the creature takes damage well in case this way it's incapacitated and has a speed of zero you can use this feature a number of times equal to your intelligence modifier minimum of one you regain all expended uses when you finish a long rest most people get to stack their their primary stat pretty early you'll find people with 18 or 20 in it so you know at level six being able to use this feature a good good four to five times per long rest is pretty awesome the only thing that i kind of wonder about this it doesn't seem to give creatures more con saving throws on each turn it's i guess they're just incapacitated until you leave or something. Uh, I kind of wonder if that's a, a little bit of a mistake in the guide there. All right, Arcane Abeyance, level 10. When you cast a spell using a spell slot of fourth or lower, you can condense the spell's magic into a moat. The spell is frozen in time in the moment of casting and held within a gray bead for one hour. This bead uh, is a tiny object with AC 15 and one hit point. It's immune to poison and psychic damage. When the duration ends or the bead is destroyed, it vanishes in a flash of light and the spell is lost. A creature holding the bead can use its action to release the spell within, uh, whereupon the bead disappears. The spell uses your spell attack bonus and uh, save dc and spell treats the creature who released it as the caster for all other purposes once you release a bead with this feature you can't do it again until you finish a short or long rest this is very cool the only hmm well let me see spell treats the creature who released it as the caster for all other purposes now this is a tricky thing a a pretty special use thing often you'll find wizards say casting haste on on like a, a fighter or you know a barbarian or something or they might cast slow 
on a group of enemies. So this is a very interesting thing because normally that would eat up your concentration. So you wouldn't, it really can hamper the number of, number of kinds of spells you can cast during combat. So if you could, if you knew combat was coming up and you pre-cast these motes and give them to, you know, fighters, barbarians, whoever, using your, using your spell DC and attack bonuses, that's pretty darn cool. That alleviates the concentration from you and you can dump it off to creatures who normally wouldn't have the concentration. Now, it would suck if they have to make wisdom saves to continue concentrating, but I mean, if you had a fighter or a barbarian and they had to make con saves, that would be pretty awesome. All right, so level 14, Convergent Future. You can peer through the possible futures and magically pull one of them into events around you, ensuring a particular outcome. When you or a creature you can see within 50 feet of you makes an attack roll or ability check or whatever else, you can use your reaction to ignore the die roll and decide which or decide whether the number rolled is the minimum needed to succeed or one less than that. Your choice. When you use this feature, you gain one level of exhaustion. Only by finishing a long rest can you remove a level of exhaustion gained in this way. So you couldn't, Great Restoration wouldn't fix it? I mean, it makes sense. This is a pretty powerful feature, especially at level 14. You're fighting some big boss. They're, you know, making an attack roll on you or uh, you see they got a spell check. You know, it's the difference with a lot of sink or suck spells like disintegrate or whatnot. This would be super handy and gain one level of exhaustion. Man, I could absolutely see, you know, really messing up your wizard uh, near the end of a big boss fight. So that's a pretty awesome feature. I would say overall the Chronergy Magic subclass makes it pretty powerful if you're looking for a character it's pretty decent flavor and it seems like it would have pretty decent numbers uh, especially in terms of utility you know being able to more or less stun a creature remove it from a fight being able to give those motes and then the whole ignore the roll is pretty darn awesome graviturgy magic understanding and mastering forces that draw bodies of matter or drive them apart. So let's see, adjust density. As an action, you can magically alter the weight of one object or creature you can see within 30 feet of you. The object or creature must be large or smaller. Target's weight is halved or doubled for up to one minute or until your concentration ends. While the weight creature is halved, the creature's speed increases by 10 feet. It can jump twice as far and has disadvantages on strength check and strength saving throw. While the weight of the creature is doubled by this effect, the creature's speed is reduced uh, by 10 feet, has advantage on strength checks and strength saving throws. Upon reaching the 10th level in this class, you can target an uh, object or creature, huge or smaller. Definitely interesting. I'm not 100% sure how useful, I mean, situationally, that would be definitely useful uh let's see up to one minute okay so yeah i mean it's all right gravity well you've learned how to manipulate gravity around a living being whether you cast a spell on a cr whenever you cast a spell on a creature you can move the target five feet to an unoccupied space of your choice if the target is willing to move the spell hits with an attack or it or if it fails saving throw against the spell all right, that's pretty cool. Several other things do the same thing. So, okay, thematically it's nice. Violent attraction. When another creature you can see within 60 feet of you hits with a weapon attack, you can use your reaction to increase the attack's velocity, causing the attack's target to take an extra 1d10 of damage of the weapon's type. 
Alternatively, if a creature within 60 feet of you takes damage from a fall, you can use your reaction to increase the fall's damage by 2d10. Now that's pretty cool. So if you use the gravity well with that feature, like you throw, you move someone five feet to over a cliff and then you add 2d10 to the damage, that's pretty cool. All right, let's see, use that feature, number time equal to the intelligence mod. And the last one, Event Horizon. As an action, you can magically emit a powerful field of gravity energy that tugs at the other creatures for up to one minute or until your concentration ends, as if you're concentrating on a spell. For the duration, whenever a creature hostile to you starts its turn within 30 feet of you, it must make a strength saving throw against your spell DC. On a failed save, it takes 2d10 force damage and its speed is reduced to zero until the start of its next turn. On a successful save, it takes half as much damage and it basically it gets half movement speed. That is potentially pretty cool. I don't know about as an action. Well, yeah, I can see that. Situationally, it is definitely cool. 2d10 force damage. That would certainly be good against creatures rushing at you. I don't know. It seems like a nice flavor, but if you had to pick between the two, certainly the Croner Cronergy magic. Cronergy Wizard seems like a lot better choice. And then here is a list of spells which some of them which i believe are mostly matt mercer originals and we may check those out in a number in another video Whew. all right guys so what do you think critical roles matt mercer and his explorer's guide to wild mount three new subclasses i would rate two as a plus chronology magic probably has the best all around features. Echo Knight is certainly pretty good for uh, the flavor and is no slouch, it's seemingly for stats. The Graviturgy seems like it has decent stats, but I don't know, it seems a little underwhelming in comparison to the others. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Which one of these three would you wanna play? And have you played them? If you have, in the comments, let me know how it went. And subscribe to the channel, it really helps a lot. Thanks everyone.